Welcome to this week's Today's Health and Wellness Podcast. This is Ashley. And I'm Brett. The Today's Health and Wellness Podcast is a joint effort of the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. In each week's podcast, we spotlight health and wellness stories you'll find in the magazine, on today's health web pages, on our social media, as well as extras you'll hear only in the weekly podcast. Thanks for subscribing and hitting the play button. Let's get started. I just recently Googled the term vegan diet, and over 7 million entries were found in less than a second. I'm amazed how big this diet choice has become. I know. My daughter has a couple of friends who have chosen this diet for a couple of different reasons. One based on her research on the treatment of animals, and the other is purely based on health reasons. Speaking of health reasons, our podcast partners, the Dollar Saving Divas, got to speak with a friend of their podcast, Beth Romer, about recently switching to becoming a vegan. Her story of why and what the results have been for her personally is inspiring. Here's the interview. Well, Leslie... I know that you do it. I mean, you're kind of vegetarian. Yeah, I'm not a meat eater. I'm not not a meat eater, but I can't say, but I'm not vegan. But I'm not vegan. Well, and I think it's very interesting. So today we have um, Beth with us. Beth is, um, works with Corporate Speedway. And good morning, Beth. How are you? Good morning, guys. I'm great. How are you? Good. Good. Well, just so you know how we found Beth, uh, Beth used to work with my daughter's boyfriend. So, um, Beth, tell us a little bit about how long you've been vegan, why you chose to go vegan, and then I want to hear, because you did tell me that you're married, but your husband is not vegan, so that ought to be interesting at the dinner table. It's very interesting. So, I've been vegan now fully for about four months, and before I went vegan, I was all organic, non-GMO, and was eating just pasture-raised meat. I watch a lot of documentaries and do a lot of research on reading, and I've always wanted to go vegan, but I told my husband socially I was so scared to, to go vegan because I just thought it would be very awkward and uncomfortable, so I just always stuck to trying to eat not as much meat and making sure that it was always organic and that the animal was raised in a humane way. And I stumbled upon a video, and I don't know if you're ever on Facebook recently or any website now videos to start playing before you even press play. Yes. yes. And yes, so this <laughs> video started playing and I didn't even click on it. And it was this 10 minute long video about, it was called meet your meat. And it was very informative and it's probably the worst of the worst. So I always tell people, if you're not ready to go vegan, I wouldn't watch it. Um, but that was kind of the push I needed. My husband walked in, and I was crying after watching it. And he goes, oh. well, vegan, here we come. <laughs> so. And he probably said, now, uh, you can't throw out all that steak because I want it. I know. So that's where it kind of just started. So four months ago, I just went cold turkey vegan, and I have not gone back, and I will never go back. So it really started for me as an animal side. And then now I have felt the benefits of being vegan. And that's kind of the, the push that I need to keep going. So, so do, you have, do you have a t-shirt that says, you know, I've gone vegan. So, you know, people, I, I, people know yeah, like when you go into a, a restaurant. T-shirt that says powered by plants. So I wear oh, I like I that. different t-shirts that I like to wear. Well, see, that's good. That's good that you, ha- that you have that. Okay. So that's interesting that you say that. I mean, I know a lot of people who come at this from the animal cruelty side of it, but there are a lot of health benefits. So, and when I stopped eating meat, I I was surprised I didn't miss it at all. I mean, once I, once I made that switch, I don't miss it. I do feel better. So could you talk a little bit about just how it has affected your health and your, your sense of well-being and how you're feeling? Absolutely. So for me, I've always had digestive issues and stomach issues since I can remember. I've been to the doctor. I have had taken medicine after medicine trying to fix my digestive issues and my stomach ache. And I went vegan and on day two, literally every issue that I've ever had was fixed. I used to have to lay on the couch after dinner with my family because, well, they were still eating because my stomach would hurt so bad. And the only way that would feel better is if I laid down. I have not had a stomach ache since I've gone vegan. Wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. It's, it's life-changing, and it's also one reason why my husband is so supportive, because I used to be such a complainer. My stomach hurts, my stomach hurts, and now I don't ever complain. And also, I was thinking about it. I was, like, driving, and I'm like, oh, I haven't had a stomach ache in four months. This is amazing. I also haven't been taking ibuprofen. I don't have headaches. Like, little things that you don't even realize. You know, I used to wake up with a headache, so I take three ibuprofens here, three ibuprofens there. I don't take 
anything anymore. So it's not just I good never for have your headaches. health. It's not just good for your health. It's good for your marriage. <laughs> yeah, it's very good for my marriage. My husband is very happy. <laughs> well, see, then that's that, and he probably still gets to have what he wants, and you're you're nice Correct. and healthy. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about. Okay, first thing I just have to ask you. Okay, then what is your favorite food? My favorite food is kind of a mix of everything. I love. I mean, I hate saying just fruits and vegetables, but I really do. And now that I've been eating this way, and people have always said it, and I never believed them, but the taste of my fruits and vegetables are totally different than they were before. Eating a carrot is like, I mean, it's just a totally different experience. It tastes different now that I'm not eating all of this other junk that I was Mm -hmm. eating before. I eat a lot of beans, a lot of lentils. I eat a lot of pasta. I mean, one of my favorite things about being vegan is I can eat all the carbs in the world. And I used to think carbs were my issue. I used to try to give up carbs because I thought that's what was hurting my stomach. I eat pizza, I eat pasta, I eat bread, and I still weigh the same the next morning, and I still feel great. And no no tummy problems. Well, let's talk no about tummy problems. let's talk about shopping, uh, and then later on we'll talk about restaurants. But when it comes to grocery shopping, um, you know, some people say, "Well, it could be very, very expensive to to be vegan." Uh, talk about how you when you go to the grocery store, how you um, look at when what do you buy, and and you know, is it more expensive? And then let's talk about some of the things that like frozen foods. They tell me sometimes can be more expensive. So talk about actually when you going into a grocery store. Okay, so when I grocery shop, I kind of always have my meals prepped out. So I'll have different lunches for the week. I'll have my different breakfasts for the week. And I find my grocery bill to actually be a lot less expensive than it was before because even though my husband still eats meat and I'm still buying some meat for him, I'm not buying all the meat that I used to be buying. So if you look at your grocery bill when you leave the store, you'll see that most of the most expensive things that you're buying is dairy and it's your meat. And I'm not buying that stuff anymore. So my fruits and vegetables, it's really not that expensive. And then in terms of anything processed, the only thing that I really buy that I love is Kite Hill products. Um, They make a ricotta cheese, a cream cheese, and a few different things from almonds. And it's delicious. And that is probably the one kind of treat that I buy myself. Um, But in terms of... Spit, Beth, spell, spell that and tell okay. us where you can find it. So Kite Hill products you can find at all Whole Foods. Um, I know I can find it at a few local grocery stores by me, but any Whole Foods is going to be, it's where I go because I'm able to buy organic products. They have an app where they have awesome coupons on fruits and vegetables usually in the summer. So they usually have like a $5 off when you spend $25 on fruits and veggies. Um, and then on top of that, they have a lot of vegan options. So it's just nice for me to go in and kind of find different things that I'm looking for. If I want to try a new recipe, like I wanted to make a manicotti for my husband and I, and I was trying to think of a recipe. So I was able to get the ricotta there and then made it for my husband with meat sauce. So it was, it's just nice to be able to have options. Well, um, now I know you have an Instagram, correct? I do. And so you probably network a lot with with people and get recipes and do all kinds of of things with with that. How can they find you, Beth? My name on Instagram is Happily Romer. And then I also have a blog. It's happilyromer.com where I post some of my recipes. I don't have as many recipes on my blog yet. I'm trying to post the recipes kind of weekly so I can build. But my Instagram is where you'll see a lot of the different foods that I'm making and posting about. Well, we'll be pushing you out when this runs as well. So you probably get a lot more people to follow you and, and probably. <laughs> I love may, that. Maybe we'll have some new. I'm actually probably going to try some. Pro- Leslie, oh. can you believe that? I'm actually going to try yeah. some products. I would <laughs> love. To, I'm going to check out your recipes because I'm always looking for like a good veggie burger that won't fall apart on the grill. So if you've, if you've yeah. figured that one out. That's true. I, they all like crumble, <laughs> they don't do. they? It's like they go through the grates and yeah, they're gone. Well, I don't like the, the ones you buy. I like to make my own because the ones you buy are. Kind I of, agree. Yeah. Well, um, I, I know you had sent us some information, but talk about when you go out to a restaurant, maybe some restaurants that have vegan options or are totally vegan, and kind of what, what are some of your favorite places to go, and what do you like when you go to those places? So kind of going out to eat is a lot easier than people think. I was kind of shocked, and that's probably the, my biggest surprise about going vegan, is that when you go to restaurants, you'd be 
surprised at how many different options they have. And now that I've been vegan, I mean, I haven't been vegan for very long, but for four months, I'm, I'm really figuring it out. I can make things vegan myself. So I think the biggest thing is, like, my husband's a big meat eater, and he loves going to steak houses. So he was talking about, should we go to Fleming's? And I was like, oh, what am I going to get at Fleming's? There's nothing, you know, what am I going to eat? Well, you can order the veggies and have them cook it in oil instead of butter. You can order French fries. I mean, that's, like, the best part about being vegan. If there's nothing vegan on the menu, you can get French fries. So you can always get a side salad, French fries. But other than that, if you go to actual restaurants, you'd be surprised by how many people actually have a vegan option or a vegetarian option that you could get without cheese or, hey, can you make this vegan for me? I was at North Star Cafe the other day, and they have a burrito, a breakfast burrito. And I was like, hey, is there any chance you can make that vegan? And they did. They put tofu in it, made it completely vegan for me, and it was absolutely delicious. I could live so, on French fries. I might be able to be vegan. And as long as I, I can get that ricotta you're, cheese at that. You're going to have to have a piece of fruit now and then. <laughs> Living well, on French fries is the best. I mean, just being able to eat French fries and then you don't feel guilty about it the next day because your body is working the way it should. So you wake up and you still feel good the next morning. Now, what about an It's just nice. Some people tell me this. It's like condiments. Like like, is there a good mayonnaise out there that... It, like, veganaise. Be, veganaise, yeah, because I, yeah. to be honest with you, I couldn't have my French fries unless I could dip them in a good mayonnaise. So if there's a good vegan mayonnaise, I think I can go vegan. Yeah, there is. So I get mine, I get the Whole Foods brand vegan mayonnaise, and I make a lot of, like, spicy mayo with it um, to make, like, I make, like, a grilled artichoke that I always get at 3rd in Hollywood, and I try to make it at home, and I make it with this, spicy sriracha mayo and it's delicious so there's definitely options and I think when everybody's so scared to go vegan oh I'm gonna miss this I could never live without cheese it's like if you just do it you'll realize you can you feel good you can live without cheese you can live without any of this stuff yeah and we were talking just if you could just briefly talk about the protein issue because we were talking about that before you called in you know there's this I think misconception about how much protein you actually need and if you go vegan you're not going to get the protein you need what have you found with that so that is my every question the minute I tell somebody I'm vegan they ask me well where to get your protein and I think kind of where America has a little bit has, has an issue is that all we care about is protein. It's, you know, you're working out. Did you get your protein shake? What do you, what's your protein for lunch? What's your protein for dinner? And really, nobody has ever died of a protein deficiency. I mean, we are very, very high on our protein. And with that said, though, any protein you get from an animal, you can get from a plant, except for B12. So as a vegan, I take a B12 supplement. Right. Um, but other than that, any protein you get. So something I always think is so interesting, 100 calories of broccoli equals 11 grams of protein, and 100 calories of steak equals 8 grams of protein. So you'd be mind-blown at how much protein is actually right. in your vegetables. I just think we have such a mindset that we have to eat chicken to get it. I yeah. think we should call you Dr. Beth. <laughs> she seems to be very knowledgeable on all this stuff. I mean, in this short period of time, I mean, you seem to do a lot of research and, you know, seem very knowledgeable on, on, you know, going vegan. And, okay, so I know Ellen DeGeneres is vegan, right? She is. She is. So I, Woody Harrelson, I think. Oh, he is too? There's a lot of celebrities that are vegan. And I think the more somebody, there was a quote that said, if, if slaughterhouses had glass walls, everybody would be vegan. Mm-hmm. I mean, once you do the research, and that's where it's like, this has become my passion, and I truly enjoy it. So because of that, I've done my research, where if, you know, some people, they don't want to know. I mean, a lot of people I know, they're like, don't tell me, I don't want to know. So, if, you know, I think it's important to know where your food comes from, where you're getting it, and not everybody feels that way. I think in the future, people will, though. Well, Beth, yeah. thank you for being with us today, and um, best of luck to you on being a vegan, and I can't wait to your one-year anniversary. You. Maybe we'll have you back again, and maybe you can say you have a oh, million so followers. <laughs> So maybe we'll do that that and see how how life has changed since you've become vegan, okay? Okay. Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh Thank you. Thanks again for listening to this week's Today's Health and Wellness podcast, brought to you by Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. If you have a health and wellness segment you would like us to cover, send us an email. Our contact information is in the show notes. And if you'd like more information about sponsoring our podcast, like Ashley just mentioned, our contact information is in the podcast notes. We look forward to hearing from you. 
circle270media.com.